Hey everyone, and welcome again to another Claim Machine Facebook Live with Major Palmer. I am your host and CEO and founder of Claim Machine. Um, yeah, I've got a, a cool guest on, happens to be another friend of mine uh, here in South Florida. We're out at Pompano Beach. And um, we have Sean Russell of SoFlo Vegans. Uh, Sean is uh, the co-founder of SoFlo Vegans, but also does some consulting and marketing. So it'll be interesting what he has to say about that, as well as supporting vegan businesses around South Florida. Let's bring in Sean. Hey, how's it going, Jeff? Hey, Sean, how are you? Good Good yeah, quick, you. quick, quick little adjustment. I'm actually the founder of SoFlo Vegans, not co-founder. Founder, founder. Okay, all right, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I know you've got some partners working with you. You want to give them a shout out? Yeah, we have an amazing team. Shout out to Alba Mendes Chung, who is our media coordinator. She works behind the scenes, booking all the guests and just keeping my my myself sane as we as we all you know maneuver. And then um, we have um, a bunch of cra um, a lot of advisors. We have Lydia. Paul Mary, we have Jackie Tarleton from the Plant Chicks. If you're from South Florida, you probably already know Jackie. And then um, we have Gabby J, who is also an advisor supporting. You may see her in a few videos as well. So, and then of course we have a whole the whole community essentially is supporting the SoFlo Vegans movement. You're, you know, essentially part of SoFlo Vegans. So thank you for your support since like. The very early beginnings. We used to be at ArtServe. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good times. Yeah, uh, I missed them. We were going to do it again this year, but then, yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that little microscopic fella uh, decided to invade everybody's uh, well-being. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's let's jump into that because I, I know that's uh, affected a lot of vegan businesses. I've seen some of the great work you've been doing trying to support some of the vegan restaurants that are been struggling locally here in Florida. I know I've been trying to do my part and, you know, ordering takeout and keep supporting the vegan restaurants as much as I can. Um, uh, so, but before we get started and all that, tell me a little bit about your background, just for my audience, um, how you got started in the vegan movement and became vegan yourself. Yeah, I mean, so my, my journey began in 2008. Well, you know, we asked, this question so many times the origin stories and you realize the seeds are planted usually before you even thought you started your journey so i would say even before 2008 i was systematically cutting things out of my diet i you know i stopped eating chocolate i think that was just on a lark like mm, can i do it yeah what's going on i stopped eating red meat um dairy so all this happened before i even um went vegan and then it, it came to the point where I, there was somebody I was working with and he had such a cool vibe to them. And I was just like, hmm. I started to talk to them and they're like, oh yeah, I'm vegetarian. I'm like, oh, vegetarian, you're the first vegetarian I know. And she's like, yeah, and there's this thing called vegan. I'm like, hmm, that sounds like something I want to try out. So I essentially went vegan for about six, seven months in 2008. Um, I'm a creature of habit, so I can eat the same thing every day. So that worked out for me. But when I went to California, and you're probably like, okay, where are you going with this? I went to California and I didn't have any of my creature comforts around. I didn't have my, I didn't know where the Whole Foods was. I didn't, Happy Cow, I think, wasn't a thing or was like really in the early stages where no one really knew about it. So I was just like, oh. and I was like one of those vegans. Hopefully, some of you guys can, you know, um, sympathize or understand. Like, I didn't really eat salads. You know, I didn't eat a lot of green veggies and stuff like that. So, you know, granted, I could have walked into a Ralph's and been like, oh, I have everything I need. <laughs> right. wasn't the case. So I fell off the wagon, long story short. 2013, went back. But this time I came with the idea of surrounding myself with community, which is at the mm -hmm. core of, of my personal, the way I live my life, community, compassion. Those are two big core principles for me. So it's like I build a community. My background is in media production, marketing. I've been doing it since 1996 consistently worked with a lot of big companies. So um, I just took my talents, my gifts, decided to put it towards the community that I love, um, South Florida, because, you know, I'm a, you know, the joke goes, it's like, you know, it's rare you find a native South Floridian. And I'm sure that's not just for South Florida. I mean, native anywhere. People are so transient moving all over the place, but especially I feel in South Florida, because we're like one of the top 
party destinations on the planet. And then it's like, okay, there's an opportunity here, you know? So I took what I learned in the other industries that I participated in, put it towards SoFlow, and we've just been figuring it out ever since. So that's part of the fun, you know, getting to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, you and I follow, some, we're both born and born and raised here, both true uh, Floridian. So um, I, I was born in Gainesville. But yeah, I, I also, you know, I got early on in my journey, I got into the health food movement uh, and then transitioned into fitness because I was a, a championship uh, swimmer in high school and college. And so there was always that physical element. I, I really incorporated health and fitness together in my practice. But in the in the getting into those fields, I was like, okay, I'm doing the the natural products, I'm doing the healthful products, but I'm not really. It's not 100% vegan. Clearly, you know, you go any health food store really has got animal products in it almost, and there's a few out there that are completely vegan, but they're very few and far between. And back in 1985, there was none. So. You know, it was like, all right, it was still a compromise. I was closer to alignment with, you know, what I felt and in my workplace, working in health food stores and later in sports nutrition. But I really wanted to align myself. And it's great that you have taken your passions and married them to your ethics. And, mm. and I love when people can bring those two pieces of the puzzle together. I know it's been such a gift. When I started Clean Machine and formed the company the way I wanted it to be, 100% plant-based, mm. non-GMO, everything gluten-free, everything completely natural, no synthetics. This is what I wanted for myself, and I got to create a company. Tell me about your vision for SoFlow and, and how that lined up with more of what you're doing, but still brought some of those passions, uh, some of those uh, experience that you had in your workplace. Yeah, I mean, when I when I decided to do SoFlow, it was at an interesting time in my life. Well, I, when I, we launched it officially, like I've been doing SoFlow in one way or another since 2014. Um, and it started off with me taking over a meetup group called South Florida Vegans. And because um, the organizer stepped down and I rebranded it SoFlow and then, you know, did my due diligence and launched, you know, what is it, three years later. Um, for me, it's that was an interesting time in my life, 2017, because that's when I decided to leave my job, essentially like, you know, take the jump, take the leap and go full time as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. And there was, you know, I didn't know what was going, what was going to happen. I just knew that I couldn't do what I was doing anymore. And, and don't get me wrong. It wasn't a job that I hated. It was actually, I worked my whole career to get that job, get that mm -hmm. position you know, on paper, it was perfect. It just, I found myself wanting to do the soul flow stuff, my, you know, my other stuff while I was there, I felt like a prisoner. And, and at that time I was speaking to a lot of like, you know, transformational groups and, you know, little peer groups, accountability groups, that's actually what it's called. And it was like, Hey, what are you, you going to commit to? And people holding you accountable. I was like, you know what? I, I want to work for myself. So I, I got to honestly say that, if that didn't happen, I don't know if SoFlow would be around because it granted me the opportunity to invest in the initial launch of it, for us to put the events out, for us to get to the um, one of the biggest events that we had, and I don't really talk about this, is the VegFest 2017. That was a huge event because we were able to get a booth um, from there. I think I think I paid for it. You know, it was one of the investments that I made, but it great investment because. That's where I met Amelia Luhan, who was our first media court um, events manager. Um, fantastic. A lot of the art serve events, she was instrumental. You, I'm sure you definitely know her. And she yeah. went on to do Mind Body Expo, doing yes. big things in the community. Met her there for the first time. Met Alba there for the first time. Um, and she would come on, obviously, you know, if you know SoFlo, you know Alba and just the general awareness built up. So that to me is like why it's important that these events get to come back. We get to figure out how to do it. And um, but pretty much to your question, because I was able to make that leap and go all in on my passion, I'm living my passion right now. And it took maybe like a year or two after that to be like, I only want to deal with vegan businesses. I only want to deal with education. And fortunately, 
I'm in that position where all of my clients are aligned with what I'm doing with SoFlow Vegans. And, you know, it's not always secure. You know, it's, it's, it's ups and downs as any entrepreneur and business owner would know, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, with all of the downs, you know, to be able to wake up, set my own schedule, know that I'm going to take my camera out and support a business and not ask for anything in return. To me, that's like the ultimate um, abundant mindset. So, yeah. And I, I think that goes, that's true for anybody, no matter what your is, it, it, passions are, if they're arts or dance or, or theater or, or philosophy or teaching or, or, you know, the, the practitioner's environment, whatever your passion is to align it more with your ethics to your, your value system, your internal, when you can get to that place, man, there's a, there's a resonance that happens there. There's, you put so much more of yourself into whatever it is you're doing and you can really shine there. And look, it doesn't, uh, for any of you who are listening out there who aren't vegan or aren't plant-based or maybe just curious, whatever it is that you feel really powerful about, mm. really strong about, if you can bring that to your work environment, to your way of making a living, is powerful and the more you can do that sometimes it takes steps like you did you know and like i did i, I worked in the health food field for other companies but i wasn't 100 percent aligned with what they were doing it, but it took it was great experience for me to learn the business learn the trade learn the customers learn the products and then i could take that with that experience and and ojt so to speak and bring that to more alignment with what i was doing so you not only do, well, let's talk about SoFlow Vegans. I mean, because you're doing some powerful things. I think I actually met you at that 2017 event, that VegFest. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, VegFest was a great thing. Now we have COVID. Obviously, events aren't happening. It's a big pivot for you. Talk about that and what you're doing now to support the community, because I know community is really important to you. So, yeah, so that was one of the things like this year, this year was going to be so amazing in terms of events. Like we had, you know, we had things lined up with, with, uh, we're going to do a film festival. We had an event with the Marlins. There was so many things going and then this happened. So it's like, now it's like, okay, they're talking about April. They're talking about later 2001 for us to kind of, you know, go back to, I don't want to say normal, but go back to where somewhat where we were before. Right. I mean, like that's way too long. You know, there's, mm -hmm. they, you know, yes, we have small businesses, but you also have like, I'm, you know, a lot of the same people who make a living off of running events. They're right. part of the community too. They're business owners too. So right. it's not just about the restaurants. It's about anyone out here trying to make a difference for um, the veg friendly community. And that's another thing too, that uh, I'm going to, I'm looking at. It's like, the goal is to spread awareness for the vegan lifestyle. And who are we spreading that awareness to? It's not to you. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the community at large who is interested, who may have been like me in 2008, who, you know, I'm okay now, but I'm hitting a bumpy road and, you know, what do I do? So it's like, so now it's like for events, we just did an event um, in Mass District where it was just a food truck. We partnered with um, the Crib Vegan, Leaves and Roots. And it was like from... Three to nine, come through, pick it up to go. We have people in their vans, you know, just having them bring the food to them. You know, it's not necessary. It doesn't have to be like everybody come together and have a party, but right. we do get to come together and and have great food, mm -hmm. um, connect with people, and be safe. So it's experimenting with how that could look. And outside of the vegan community, there's people who are doing it. There's like drive through farmers markets, there's a lot of innovation going out. So it's like looking at what works, what, and bringing it to our community so we all can continue to, to maneuver and stay open. Because what I don't want to have happen is, you know, come when things, you know, get lenient, you know, we are only at a quarter of, of businesses open. But to that point, I've also noticed there are people who are opening business businesses. It's not one situation across the board. There's people who are thriving. You know, like I'm going to certain places and I'm like, hey, I would love to shoot a video. It's like, eh, we're okay. You know, it's like we have, we're pretty much book solid, you know? So it's like, 
it's figuring out how we can support and we're ramping up our digital content to your question. That's another way that we're supporting. So we are like the spotlight program, our directory where you can actually vote. Um, Cause I know for me, like if I want to find out recommendations, I want shortcuts. You know, if there's a list of 200 places, I, I don't want to have to pick, you know? So if, I could see that this is what this community is supporting, what they're getting behind and maybe just narrow it down and then maybe go a little bit, you know, further down the list. Once I've tried maybe the top five ones, I'm thinking that's a, a good way. So we're trying that out. We, we really started promoting it earlier this week and, you know, traffic has definitely picked up on our website, on our social. So we're excited. Um, so yeah, the video content, we have a magazine that's going to be launching in nice. November. We're launching huge campaigns that are going to be bringing a lot of the brands. We have, you know, luckily we're getting sponsors for our podcast and for our content. So that's allowing us to go to these businesses and shoot these videos and, and, you know, do it as a courtesy to the community. So we're excited. A lot of good things are happening. Even more stuff is happening, but I'm, you know, I'm just gonna leave it at that for right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because right. yeah, some things were in the works. You know, who knows what can happen uh, in between here and there. Um, I totally get that. Like we're in development of four new products, but I don't want to talk about them yet. Yeah. Today, you know, because like, all right, some are, you know, I don't want our competition to know what we're working on, and, and some are, well, it may happen, it may not happen. You know, it's like. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can happen in between when we're, we're in, we're in development, but that's exciting. So what are some of the things that, uh, people, how can people get involved with SoFlow Vegan, become a member? Mm -hmm. What kind of benefits they offer? How, what can they get engaged in and, and experience with, uh, being a SoFlow, uh, vegan member? So we're really focusing, we're really focusing on a membership model where it's, um, free to join as a business or as an individual. Um, we're looking for anyone who's veg friendly. So you don't have to be vegan to be a part of our community. Just be open to maybe trying vegan options. But that's where the membership comes in because we're looking, uh, most of the content that we put out is going to be directed towards anyone who's interested in veganism. And even because I think the people that need it the most are the ones who are just starting out. So we're going to be looking at using our gifts, using our particular view of how we see the world, creating content behind that bite-sized content. And then for the community, we'll be doing, you know, curating more experiences for people who may be a little jaded because I've come across people who are in the community, vegans, long-term vegans. It's like, I've heard everything. I don't need to hear another doctor. I don't need to hear another expert. I'm kind of like good with where I am. Um, right. Figure out ways to re-engage them, get them right. back into the fold. And what I've heard, which is going to be a challenge right now is they want more fun activities. They want to be able to meet people, have a good time. Yeah. Um, it not necessarily always be about um, activism or this or the other. They just want to be able to hang around people that they know are like them. So that was something we were starting to dip with the party event that which you were a part of as well mm -hmm. that we had, but um, we'll get back to that. But for now it's like, okay, Let's figure it out. Let's throw it on the wall and see if it sticks. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I think we're in that period where a lot of people are, are having to reinvent themselves, um, the way they approach other people. Because, like, to, to good point that you brought this up. Because I and I'm I'm experienced being a long term vegan, 35 year vegan myself. You know, it's like, it, and and look, my wife's been vegan for over 25 years. We got married uh, at a vegan restaurant, Sublime, back in the day. And uh, when it was still around, unfortunately, it's gone. But uh, uh, went on the vegan cruise for our honeymoon. So we were totally did the vegan thing. But, you know, I've seen things like the vegan cruise turn into, last I saw, there was 14 doctors on there. Mm. So it's just like, okay, how many times do you want to hear another doctor talk about all the health? It's like, I've heard that a gazillion times already. And there is some information fatigue going on and especially covid has put mm -hmm. people into doing like what we're doing right now <laughs> a lot yeah. of facebook lives are a lot of it because people are sitting at home on their computers and that's normally where they go but we can get fatigued with the same old information the same doctors the same speakers the same top 
you know, people on there. That's why I love bringing guests like yourself and myself and, and other people in the community to really talk about, okay, what are we doing to keep this movement fresh, exciting, interesting? Because there's so much more than just the science. I love the Dr. Gregors of the world, but that's not everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love the, the, the top fitness athletes uh, that are out there, but they're dominating the space. And I just want to hear some other voices. I want to hear some other things about the movement um, through health and fitness, but through all of the different elements, the social structure. I mean, yeah. connecting with people, that's so important. And we're not hearing about this in, in, in a lot of the groups or a lot of the talks. I had a great guest on, uh, Elizabeth uh, Alfano. I don't know if you know her, uh, but she was amazing. What energy she brings. But I love her whole take, especially working with um, uh, the magazine, business magazine, um, uh, Vet Economist, that that perspective, the whole business aspect mm. of starting a business, being a vegan entrepreneur, you know, getting out there and starting it, pivoting, you know, how to stay surviving and that how to make the business work. That's an element that's not really talked about as much. And I'd like to see more conversation about. And I know you support vegan business as well through SoFlow Vegans. Can you talk about that as well? Being a vegan business owner and encouraging other people to go start a vegan business. I know it sounds like a tough time to do that, but there's nothing more rewarding in that alignment, but you do have to do it correct. And I think using, finding resources, finding mentors, finding tools or other groups like SoFlow Vegan that have tools, that have resources, that people can learn from so that they launch a successful plant-based or vegan business. That's important. Talk about the support you give in that aspect. Yeah. So that's, that's a great point. Um, one of the things that we're looking at and it's, and it's a direct uh, answer to how do you combat against fatigue? Yeah. And it's by providing resources It's by, by providing information. It's, it's, thinking outside of the box and it, it doesn't have like all of the content doesn't have to be about the vegan diet about the vegan this i think right. by the nature that we're vegan it kind of creates the container you can kind of have an idea of where they're coming from but to your point i i could easily make content on how to start a live stream it doesn't have to be how to start a live stream with fair trade electricity or something like that. It's just how to start a live stream, you know, and that, and, and it's coming from, and you know who it's coming from. It's coming from someone who wants you to start a live stream so you can support the animals, so you can support the health, but that's not the emphasis. The emphasis is providing with tools, providing with resources, so you can be the best version of yourself, because that is actually part of, of what I see being the components of, of the vegan lifestyle. You know, you have the health, you have the environment, you have the animals, you have love. And I think that love component for yourself to be that best version of yourself, be compassionate for yourself. You know, for me, that starts with you. It starts with me. Then you can then express that to your family, to your friends, to your community, to the global community. And what I see a lot happen is that people jump straight to the global community. Right. <laughs> and they get burnt out or they're not addressing things that are coming up for them. And now you're in a situation where people are relying on you. They look up to your voice and then you disappear right. and you come in, you disappear. And I'm saying this for myself, like that's, that's happened to me plenty of times. That's derailed a lot of momentum that I've had because I didn't look at for myself. So now I'm working on that, creating that balance. Cause you kind of let the, once you let the genie out of the bottle, like for yourself, like let's say you weren't doing self care, you can't be like, oh, okay, clean machine. I'm going to put you on pause while I take care of myself. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to do both at the same time. But for me, yeah. it's that awareness that, okay, yeah, maybe I should, you know, take, you know, from seven to the rest of the night and turn off all communications and just focus on me. Are right, little things like that are important, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of where I am right now. It's like figuring out ways to provide information that goes above and beyond what pe other people are doing because right. you know, like you said, you can you can flick any button or icon on the internet now and find 
17 or 25 people talking to the same person about the same thing. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> I know. And there's so many different elements of it. I mean, the spiritual element of it doesn't get talked about hardly enough. And I think a lot of people either come from uh, religious backgrounds and find that uh, those changes through it, or even spiritual, personal breakthroughs, emotional breakthroughs, like I did, uh, that caused an evolution, a change, that light bulb moment that goes off when you say, wow, that amount of suffering that's taking mm -hmm. place and, and I'm being part of that, I don't want to be a part of that. The whole ethical part of it and, and what it means to transition or talk about like, for instance, you know, um, I, I read uh, an article that showed that 80% uh, of all the vegans alive today in the United States have become vegan within the last two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of newbie vegans. And and for me, 35 years ago, when that light bulb for, first went on, there's a sense of anger. There's a sense of guilt. There's a sense of wrongness. You know, it's like, oh, my God, I was lied to. You know, uh, oh, my God, this is, you know, this is a horror. This is a, excuse my language, a shit show. You know, mm -hmm. why was I not aware of this? Why did I got angry at myself for not being aware of of the situation? Why did I not see this? You know, I'm a compassionate person. So I thought, but mm -hmm. I was contributing. It was so carefully hidden from us. You know, when you pick up that package, it's it's beef. It's not a dead cow's body part. You know, that's, they even changed the names on it. So that, that, that anger, that frustration can lead to mm. an outward negativity. And, um, and with so many new vegans going through that change, just like when someone dies on a very emotional impact, right? And you go through the stages of death, you know, the anger, the sadness, the grief, the letting go, and then the coming to peace with it. There are stages of veganism, too, that I think going, but we have this huge bubble of a lot of new people coming in. And when that aha moment comes and that removing the, the blanket and seeing the truth, the ugliness, the horror of what we were participating in and is going on on a global scale is just mind boggling. And, you know, to come to that awareness and then how can we help those of us who have been around a little bit longer and have allowed our stages to go through to the point where we can nurture, we can support, we can guide? I think that's such an important piece that really needs to be talked about more. Um, it's right to be angry. Everybody should be angry when they come into this awareness because there's a great wrong going on. But there also needs to be a place where that is guided and mentored where that anger turns into action, turns into real change, change, change that actually supports and is positive to the growth of the movement. Um, I want to throw your sense, two cents in on that one. <laughs> to me, that is the thing I love to talk about the most, and and just in life. And I, whenever that conversation happens on the podcast, it's like, all right. Let's go. Because <laughs> yes. it's so nuanced. They're like mm. I've I've come to a point that whenever I feel I have the answer, I'm starting to get cold. <laughs> and part of it is anchoring myself with compassion. And I put it out a lot and I put it out purposely to let people know and to remind myself to always lead with compassion. Because okay. That puts me in an interesting position. That puts me in the role of the listener, listening to understand. Because like everything you just described, someone who's a new vegan, they're seeing, you know, they essentially saw that the Wizard of Oz is just a little guy behind the thing. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they're upset. And for me, it's like, okay, here's where the compassion comes in. Okay. Right. I've been there at some point in my life. And I know what I would say if someone would come to me and say, listen, you can't be so upset. You can't be so angry. You can't be so hostile because that's not the way to communicate the message. I'd like, who are you to tell me how I should do what I'm doing when I'm doing it? 
You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, okay, go through your experience. Like you, you, you mentioned that you experience your, like you experience your experience and then you get to process that, how you process it. You know, you're not going to rewire your, the way you operate based off of someone's recommendation. And you may, I don't know. I make up that you can, I'm going to make up that you can. Um, <laughs> but uh, my experience is that it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a little bit more nuanced and, and, and challenging than that. Not impossible. So that is important. And it starts with self-awareness that starts with, like I took three years unpacking myself with the help of other people mm-hmm. to get to a point to realize when I am, when I am asserting my position on someone else, rather than standing for what I believe in and being a force of love and compassion, being there for someone to be a sounding board, to be a mirror for what's coming up for them. And then not coming at it from a perspective of, of sympathy, but from empathy. Right. You know, like, I don't need to feel sorry for you. Who am I to feel sorry for you? But I am here to help you however it is you need to be helped. Right. If you ask for something, I will do my best to, to facilitate that. But a lot of times people just want to someone to hear them. Yes. They just want to, somebody to hear them without coming back with a solution or, oh, you're silly or why are you upset? That's so small. There's people in, in Somalia dying right now and you're worried about this. You know, like that's. That, to me, that's that's ineffective, and I learned so much from listening to people mm. that it's one of my favorite things to do. And I know I get I have a voice too, right. and giving is a two way streak. You know, me just listening to you, or me just donating, or just going out and shooting these videos, or doing these things, isn't necessarily make me a giver. Mm-hmm. If I'm not open to receive as well, mm-hmm. if someone makes a compliment and immediately I go to, well, you don't know what you're talking about or go to, you know, my operating mechanisms of that I developed when I was a child, um, which all comes from unpacking. However you unpack it, you can do it yourself. You can do it without. It helped me to have someone else look at my blind spots and for me to go, huh, not to say that it's fixed. But I know when it's like today, I was like feeling a little exhausted and kind of going, being in my stuff, but, and I was able to recognize that it was happening. And I made the choice to wallow in it because I don't always allow myself to feel. Mm -hmm. So that was a choice I made at the moment, not to feel sorry for myself, but to be like, you know what? It's okay to be upset. It's okay to feel a little depressed. And I know I'm going to be speaking with you and I have a live a little bit at seven and I've chose to got off. I chose to shift and get off of that because it's not going to serve me. It's not going to serve me being in this conversation with you and be like, I'm so exhausted. I'm just, I'm this like, no, I make up that no one wants to hear that, <laughs> you know? Um, but just me talking to you right now, it's, you know, being in that mindset, whether or not I was 100% there when I made that choice, mm-hmm. I am now in a place where I'm excited. I have energy. I'm ready for whatever comes on after this. But that started because I made the choice to experience my experience and then get off of it when it didn't serve me. And right. that's something that I could didn't put together until I went through a course or somebody, you know, shared that information with me. So, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty much that. (laughs) (laughs) And, 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 you know, as people are making these changes, which a lot of people are, tons of new people are coming to the movement are connecting the dots. I mean, obviously we have uh, great movies out now, great books. We're getting it from almost every field of of practice and expertise and work environment uh, adopting it you're seeing it in the food stores all the way out to the even the fast food stores so a lot of this change is happening which is very exciting to see and you know i've seen the statistics that flexitarian people who are making changes smaller changes but changes more awareness and COVID is even uh, factored i just saw a study released 
showed that 25% of millennials in the UK have changed their diet to a more plant-based diet just since COVID-19. 25% of the entire UK millennial population. That's amazing. That's a massive shift. And, and a lot of times, you know, it takes sometimes for people, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, I got there because I had a heart attack or I got cancer where something is directly threatening our lives can cause a transition for us to take change. So, you know, when I see something as as bad as COVID taking almost 200,000 people's lives, and I see that, I see there's an urgency there of people. And I hate to say it, but sometimes human beings need to have their back up against the wall in yeah. order to, to get off their safety zone and, and out of a, some, a, a system, a way of behaving and thinking and eating that's not working for them and they just won't budge. I, I'm glad that is. I'm sad that it's taken something as tragic as COVID-19. But like four months ago, I talked about all this amazing science, laid out a very good plan, built a whole video and launched it about D3 and its impact on viruses and, and specifically COVID-19. I got blasted. Oh, Jeff, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. A, a major study just came out showing mm -hmm. that those with the highest levels of D3 in their system across the board, massive study, 54% less risk of contracting COVID-19. Mm -hmm. That means that D3 is actually blocking from that COVID from taking hold and causing it, and a much greater risk, uh, reduced risk of actually being injured or suffering permanent injury, including death from COVID-19. 54%. Mm -hmm. I mean, 200,000 people died. Imagine 100,000 people having a chance at life just by taking a simple vitamin D supplement. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to look at this information coming from any sources and take it in. We, yes, the internet is loaded with yeah. bad information, unfortunately, right now. But look at who's, you know, offering the source and then do your own research, but don't just dismiss this information when it can save lives these days. And that's so important for what we're doing. We're talking, you know, people say, oh, you're you're trying to preach your, your ideology on me. And I'm like, no, I want you to survive and live your best, healthiest life. This is my gift to you. This is not making you, I'm not trying to make you change. I'm trying to offer something that may help you live a more empowered, helpful, happy, enjoyable life. Mm. That's what I'm offering. It's not a threat to you. I'm not trying to take away anything from you, you know, and, and how can we present that information in a way that gets people to receive the information as a gift, as a Thank you for this information that I can use to benefit myself, my health, my life, my relationship with the planet, with the environment, with the animals that can all improve. I, I, you know, I think we need to get beyond this from both from both points of view. Oh, sorry. Uh, from both points of view, how do we get beyond this, uh, you know, you, you know, Jeff, you turn vegan. Uh, do you miss anything? And I'm like, do, do I miss being sick? Do I miss being unhealthy at 57? Do I miss having to take seven drugs? That's what the average person my age is on seven pharmaceutical drugs for treatments of multiple health ailments. I take zero, mm. none. I'm living in my perfect health. All my joints work. Everything works. It's like, this is a gift. It's not something I'm trying to take away from people. And how do you communicate that better so that people, I know some people are going to get defensive no matter what you say. And I get that. But how can we do a better job of that? And how have you discovered to do that? I think that just comes from presenting yourself authentically. Mm. Because everyone responds to different to a different types of communication. Yeah. So that's where that's where I really see myself um, as an expert in terms of communication. 
and just because I just saw, I know so many different disciplines and have been in so many different industries and whatnot. It's because when you, when you're trying to please everybody, you end up moving away from that authentic point. Right. And you never know, like what you were describing and what a lot of people in this community do is they are planting seeds mm -hmm. and they, you're planting seeds everywhere you go. And you never know what that's going to grow into. You may never see it sprout. Like somebody may be watching this and then three years from now, they're like, oh yeah, I remember that conversation that they, they had. I see. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Why don't I go vegan? <laughs> You don't know, I, and I see this a lot with education. Uh, from being in education, I you know I was a, a, in the education system for about fourteen years, and you know you would just be yourself, have fun with the kids, and then five six years later they're in high school. This is elementary school. They're in high school, and they're like, "Hey, Mr. Russell, I remember you. You had the puppet and this that." And you're like, "Oh, this is so nice!" Like I didn't realize like I had that sort of yeah. impact. And you know, I'm sure teachers. Every teacher has that story. Um, but it's like, you don't know what you're doing and that's good and that could be bad. You know what I mean? In terms of how you're showing up, you could, something you do could go in the opposite direction. Like, <laughs> oh, I never want to go vegan because of this person. Right. So it's, it's for me, it's being authentic. Mm -hmm. But even before that, knowing your true self. Right. Because you could be acting out of what you perceive to be authenticity, but it's really not that. You know, you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're doing it for the gram. If kid that the kids still say that, but um, yeah, so no, yeah, for me, it's authentic. To answer your question, it's authenticity. That's it's beautiful. I, I totally agree. And and when you can come from that place, I I know sometimes we get so caught up because there is an urgency. People are dying every day from heart attacks, strokes, diseases caused by what we're putting in our mouth. Uh, the environment is getting destroyed on such a rapid basis. We are hurtling towards a, a climate change catastrophe. Uh, animals are dying, one trillion animals. There is a real sense of urgency on so many levels. And, and we're at, you know, 11, 59 and 52 seconds, you know, to midnight uh, before really, traumatic uh, and irreversible damage happens, both on a personal level to people who could get that heart attack, cancer, stroke, diabetes, obesity, all of those things, or the animals. I mean, a trillion animals dying per year for the food system. If you actually, by some accounts, it's up to two to three trillion with the fish included. I mean, that's a, that's a sentient life holocaust like this planet has never, ever seen before. That is so much energetic suffering going on at one time. It's just unfathomable to imagine what that's doing to the, to the group, you know, groupthink of this planet. There is an urgency, but we can get so stressed by that urgency, you know, that we come across overly aggressive or... You know, so how do you balance that? There's an extreme emergency. We need change and we need it now and in a big way. But how can you present that in a way that it conveys the urgency at hand, yet still doesn't come across as threatening or challenging or, or aggressive or negative or the angry vegan, so to speak? My, my answer to that is don't, I wouldn't try to do anything. Because everyone plays their role. You know, I, me, you know, being vocal and saying, you know, this is what should happen and this is the thing and adding urgency to the way that I'm speaking about a particular topic isn't authentic to my delivery style. Right. But it may be authentic to someone else's and they mm -hmm. may be able to pull it off in such a way that they land the message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I'm coming at them saying, well, the way I feel you should do it is to understand them, connect with them, find out where they're coming from. They may not have the temperament for that. They may not be in a place where that's something that they want to commit to. And if they end up doing it, it could backfire. It could be like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. They can blow up because they're holding. So it's like, mm -hmm. for me, it's meeting people where they are, being authentic with who I am, but that doesn't come without self-awareness. 
So my advice to everyone is to take self-care, figure out what has you. You know, we're looking at vices, we're looking at things, you know, junk food, whatever it is. For me, it's, if it's causing harm to you, causing harm to others, if it's negatively impacting your life, then that's something that you should look at addressing. But if it's something that's not impacting your life, then I would focus on doubling down on what is working for you right. because that's going to put you in a place of abundance that's going to allow you to find that natural rhythm that's going to resonate with the people that are around you and it's it's tricky it's it's easier said than done i'm you know like i said if i ever if i were to ever write i'm saying this right now if i ever write a book telling you what you should do do not buy it Yes, exactly. You know, now I can write a book telling you what works for me. Right. And that's semantics, but it's a it's a huge ex- a distinction. Yes. Because I'm not you and you're not me. But if this works for me and it resonates with you, it may be something that you want to try. But if I'm telling you what to do, that that is me saying that I have the answer. Right. And I and like I said, I, I make up that I do have the answer and that doesn't serve me. I know that doesn't feel right when I say it. Man. Good stuff, my man. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let people know how they can get in touch with you. Um, and and also with uh, Soul Level Vegans and also you do consulting work. You do some uh, work with marketing and media. Talk to them about and how they can get in touch with you and what those services are. Yeah, so my, my primary business is called Osaris Media. We're a marketing agent, a boutique marketing agency. We focus mainly, like I said, with vegan clients because um, most of my referrals come from the people seeing the work that I do with SoFlow. So that's worked out for me. And um, we do video, pretty much everything across the board, any skill set that I have from video production, web design, graphic design, audio production, you know, pretty much like I've had to be a one man show for most of my life. So I've picked up all these skills and through repetition, I've just had developed my own sort of style that I, you know, uh, for what I do. So I offer that service to clients through SoFlo Vegans, through our business partnership. We obviously support through the content that we create, the articles, the newsletters, but we have like sponsorships. We have boost um, sustainer programs if people want to support financially so we can build our team because that's the next step for us is, you know, building out a team that we can, you know, stay consistent, be the best versions of ourselves so we can really boost everybody because it's, it's right. Like my thing is it's, it's, it's really cool that some businesses are thriving, but I want to see all businesses thrive. And if they can plug into a network that, you know, has free and paid opportunities, I think that's the best route. And, you know, it's slow, but I'm starting to see the community, you know, catch on to what we're doing. Like our mission is to make South Florida a global hotspot for veganism. And you can argue Miami is a global hotspot. I didn't say Miami. <laughs> right. I want West Palm, Broward, and, and Miami-Dade, the Keys, everything that's considered South Florida to be thriving. Yes. And I will continue to do this until it happens. And I'm excited to continue to see the progression of this community, businesses flourish and people move down here and not out of here. So all these, like my whole family (laughs) is gone, (laughs) you know, but I am committed to being here because this is the beautiful place. This is a beautiful place to live. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like just, just the, and I didn't and I didn't take full advantage of this growing up, but just to be able to go to the ocean mm. and ground yourself. Like if you if you're from South Florida and you've never just sat on the sand in the middle of the night watching with the moon and just take in the ocean air and yep. nothing else, that to me is like worth the price of admission. <laughs> indeed. 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 Well, thank you so much for all you're doing to support the community, the plant-based and vegan community, especially 
through education, through business support, through marketing and media efforts, uh, through everything you do. There is a is going to be the uh, SoFlow Vegans Unite Live. Thank tonight. you, thank you. So yes, at seven o'clock, we're going to be going live to Facebook and YouTube. We're going. We have a couple of guests on. We have Karen Alice Ritter, who is a, another huge supporter of SoFlow Vegan. She's a vegan transition coach and a coach and a vegan activist. She was going to be on talking about what she's up to. By the way, all of this is interactive, so you know. With all these experts that we're going to have, we encourage you to come, be in our live audience, ask questions. We'll make sure we get them answered. We have um, Veronica Green, who is the author of Veggie Vero. She has a new book that's coming out. Super exciting. I've been another person I've been following since we got started and just see how active she is in the community. And, you know, and also it touches my heart, too, that she is catering towards um, the children who are the future, which yes. I listened to that song the other day. It's such a beautiful <laughs> song, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. The, the future. Um, so yeah, we have Veronica Green, and then we have James Wildman, who is awesome. like some, somebody I wanted to do stuff with, but never was able to work it. Never, I think I never really even reached reached out. But the opportunity presented itself, and I was like, I got to get him on. So he's gonna be on. Actually, I just spent the morning with him. Um, I'm filming some really cool stuff for 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 Animal Rights Foundation of Florida, so he's going to be on. So you definitely want to ask him a bunch of questions, and then yeah. in between we'll be playing some video packages we've created. Um, we'll have some members from SoFlow on as well. So it's just a party. Come on, have a good time, right. have your dinner next to you, and just you know rock out. Find out what's happening in South Florida and all the cool stuff. How you can get involved. So it's going to be seven o'clock. If you go to SoFloVegans.com. We're gonna have an embed on the homepage that you can check out, but we're on Facebook and YouTube, you can find it. And for those of you who might be watching sometime in the future, this video, <laughs> that is only happening this evening at the time of the live broadcast, which is Thursday, uh, uh, September 24th, 19... <laughs> 2020. <laughs> I'm still saying 19, man. That, it's that type of year, it's that type of year. It's moving so slow, <laughs> we're it. going back. <laughs> I don't even want to say 2020. It's been such a train wreck. <laughs> what I will say to that is we will have all of our content is archived on our website. So if you are watching this after um, the aired, then you can watch the full stream and we'll be pulling snippets of content and putting it all over the place. So you'll be able to watch it as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for you and your team doing some amazing things. Always good to talk with you, man. We have such great heart-to-heart -heart talks about yes. stuff. And uh, look forward to hanging with you at uh, Leaves and Roots once again, uh, once uh, <laughs> things get better. But uh, it, Leaves and Roots is still open, by the way. It's another vegan, great place to uh, get some vegan uh, eats and uh, kava and kratom if you like it. Um, so uh, I know you can find Sean there. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, eighty percent chance you'll see me like just sitting in my seat with my kratom, yeah. <laughs> typing away. Uh, so great to have you on. Great to see you, and thanks for coming on and sharing some wisdom with you. I really love your perspective and the way you approach things. And thank you for all you're doing to support the the vegan community. I, I appreciate. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. All right. Be sure to join us next week. We're going to have a really cool guest on. I won't disclose it, but as an NFL pro football player.